Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to host uh, Professor Sergei Makarov uh, with us today. Uh, Sergei received his PhD in 2014 at the uh, highly prestigious, well-known Lebedev uh, Physical Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences in Moscow. And then he had his habilitation at ITMO uh, University in St. Petersburg, Russia. He's uh, currently the head of laboratory of the hybrid nanophotonics and optoelectronics, as well as the director of shared research facilities on nanotechnology at ITMO. Uh, he has uh, received a number of prestigious awards. Uh, he was awarded the Russian Presidential Award uh, this year, a Medal of Russian Academy of Sciences uh, for Young Researchers in 2019, the gold medal of Alferos uh, Foundation, uh, as well as the St. Petersburg Government Award in the field of technology. Uh, Professor Makarov's uh, research interests include uh, nanophotonics, uh, particularly uh, halite uh, perovskites, which I believe will be the subject of his lecture today. Without uh, further ado, uh, uh, Sergei, uh, the screen is yours. Okay, thanks a lot, Okan. Okay. So, can you see my screen? Y yes, very well, indeed. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for introduction. Yes, uh, as uh, Vulkan said that uh, today I will talk mostly about uh, halide perovskites and uh, with focus on nanophotonics and photonics applications which we can develop basing on these materials. Uh, but first of all, just a couple of words about uh, us. So our location is a very beautiful city, uh, St. Petersburg. This is one uh, second uh, city in Russia regarding size and uh, population and force in Europe. So it's so-called uh, cultural capital of Russia. So there are a lot of palaces and interesting places to visit. So you're always welcome. Uh, and uh, uh, just a, a few words about Itmo University. So this university is one of the top uh, among uh, Russian universities. Uh, and uh, it focuses on mostly on uh, IT. It's on in, in the top, top 100 in the world in this field. Uh, and uh, our programmers, they received uh, their hold, uh, world record among the world championships uh, in programming. Uh, and also on, we focused on photonics. So, and I am mostly from, uh, from photonics department. So, and actually I am a head of laboratory uh, which is called Paralab. Uh, it's quite new laboratory and focus on perovskites, uh, as you can uh, realize from from the title, from the name of this um, laboratory. So it's quite international laboratory, and uh, yeah, it's, it's around around 30, 30 members of laboratories. So and just uh, to start with, so let's start from uh, very beginning. Uh, so, as you know, nanophotonics uh, can be uh, can be considered uh, as a resonant nanoparticles, so nanostructures made of two types of materials. Uh, one of them is uh, metals, of course, uh, which is uh, very well known as a plasmonics, uh, but uh, relatively so maybe during the last ten years. Uh, the dielectric nanophotonics was developed uh, was developing very very, very rapidly uh, because even in simple shape or spherical shape of nanoparticles we, we can have uh, various types of resonances and so-called artificial magnetism and optical range is also here so uh, and what are the main applications of this dielectric or semiconductor nanophotonics um, of course, based on nano resonators, nano particles, metasurfaces uh, combined with light emitting materials, 
uh, which of course uh, the case of uh, semiconductors rather than metals in, in plasmonics is uh, you, you cannot have very high efficiency of luminescence from metals of course but with semiconductors it's quite easy to to achieve and uh, based on these very nice reviews from um, uh, all over the world uh, so <clears throat> You can you can read that and find a lot of information on nano lasers and uh, some applications in LEDs and, and, and many other fields. So this is field this field of semiconductor nanophotonics is very fruitful and um, uh, and very interesting for for many industrial applications. And uh, let's start from very beginning from from background. So basically. Um, in, uh, in we, we, we should consider first uh, uh, sim the simplest case, uh, dielectric or semiconductor nanoparticles uh, like sphere. In this case, we can apply uh, analytical solution, analytical theory for uh, plane wave scattering on a spherical particle developed by Gustav Mie in the beginning of the 20th century. So in this case, uh, we can say that for the first uh, two fundamental modes, uh, we can uh, represent them as a uh, um, you know, represent them as a electrical dipolar mode and magnetical dipolar mode. So in the electrical case, um, electric field lines oscillating along uh, one line, and it looks like dipole, uh, electric dipole. In magnetic dipole case, uh, the same thing with magnetic uh, field line. So, um, and uh, the most, the more importantly that we can, uh, based on this theory, we can provide a more decomposition for this case of spherical particle with refractive index around four, uh, which is really, which is relevant for such materials as uh, silicon, uh, some, uh, some three, five, materials and so on uh, and with size uh, around 100 nanometers so we have two resonances in the blue range and but then with increase of size just a little bit we have uh, quite considerable shift of these two resonances into the direction of uh, uh, in the to red red region so with increase of particle you see that it's easy to tune uh, these resonances all over all visible range so, and uh, from the point of view of uh, field localization at different points, you see that uh, in this point we have uh, magnetic dipolar mode with strong localization of electric field inside and the scattering uh, on this nanoparticle is symmetrical, so it's uh, almost equal to forward and backward direction. And the same story, we have typical scattering power you know, scattering diagram for dipolar mode also symmetrical and with field localization inside but uh, more interestingly that when we have uh, equal amplitudes of these resonances and different phases or equal phases we can have uh, interesting regime regimes uh, so so called uh, these are they are called the character conditions and uh, in this case, we have uh, forward scattering if we just assume the plane wave comes from up to down. And uh, here we have uh, unidirectional propagation to, to one side. And in case of different phases between two resonances, we, we have uh, backward scattering and so on. So this is quite interesting physics of interference between different modes in the nanoparticle. So, and uh, to, to sum up uh, this uh, part regarding uh, dielectric nanoparticles, of course, we with dielectric nanoparticles, semiconductor nanoparticles, we have uh, strong field localization inside. Uh, we we have quite uh, uh, quite powerful tool for scattering um, uh, by light manipulation at nanoscale, so superplane scale, where we can control the scattering uh, diagram or emission diagram in principle and also uh, with the, with semiconductors we, we have a lot of interesting effects like Raman polymerescence and so on uh, which is quite uh, so this is quite rich physics here and of course uh, physics depends on the material and 
in the very beginning, silicon was one of the most important material in this field. Uh, but then uh, people started to develop uh, various lighting emitting material like A3, B5, or we developed uh, uh, electric nanophotonics based on perovskites. So halide perovskites, just a couple of words about uh, history of this material. So this material was found uh, by German uh, mineralogist Gustav Rose in the mid of uh, 19th century in the Ural Mountains in the Russian Empire. Um, and then this mineral uh, was described, the structure of this mineral was described by Victor Goldschmidt. And a lot of materials actually have such kind of uh, ABX3 structure and perovskite crystalline structure. Uh, and then also in 19th century, uh, various all inorganic halide perovskites were synthesized, and also organic inorganic perovskites were uh, synthesized in the chemical laboratories. And only in the beginning of 21st century, uh, people realized that this very uh, promising material for photovoltaics. So now efficiencies are over 25%. Also, perovskites LED, of course. You know um, very well that this is also very good material and uh, interesting and very exciting results are achieved also in this direction. And also from uh, the mid of 10th of uh, 21st century, uh, also perovskite micro nano lasers uh, were starting to be developed. And uh, and uh, I will focus my talk mostly on on also on, on, on this on this direction. So, and just a few words about some basic properties of halide perovskites. So, of course, uh, the, the, there are some advantages over silicon, of course, because silicon is in, uh, indirect um, band gap material. Uh, the transition, the interband transition perovskites is stronger than in gallium arsenide. Uh, halide perovskites is easy to tune by just tuning and halogen uh, from uh, chlorine to iodine, we can uh, gradually tune uh, the composition and band gap width from one and a half electron volts up to three electron volts approximately. So here you see that uh, halide perovskites have a refractive index more than two and less than three. So in principle, for it's it's uh, enough for strong light localization and nanoparticles and nanostructures of these materials, and for, uh, enough for good contrast uh, regarding some glass substrates, a fire substrate, or many other substrates uh, where we can deposit our nanostructures. Also. Uh, in photovoltaics, of course, perovskites have very good performance because of high absorption, very sharp band gap. Uh, and uh, regarding the light emitting properties, also perovskites are quite good uh, because uh, the defect states are quite shallow for perovskites, it's so called defect tolerant materials. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, quantum yield. Uh, is quite robust to processing its processing or some other uh, some post processing techniques so and i will show you in the very last part of my talk how we employ this property um, for nanostructuring of perovskites so and uh, to summarize uh, so halide perovskites uh, they have uh, excitons also in room temperatures are quite tunable because we can tune band gap we have uh, cheap uh, production uh, wet chemistry based production, fabrication of these nanostructures, uh, high quantum yield of photoluminescence. Uh, the basic designs can be like nanoparticles, nanowires, plates, microplates, some metasurfaces, some integrated designs also are possible. So this is quite um, quite a strong, a powerful platform for, for nanostructuring actually. And here are some examples of tunability of perovskites from all over uh, visible range and even in near air range, one can get lazing. And yeah, now I will talk about resonant nanoparticles and uh, me resonances, which I discussed um, before. 
So in the particles, the size is larger than 100 nanometers. So it's not about nanocrystals or some quantum confinement, uh, quantum doors. No, it's just about optical resonances like in bulk, bulk 3D perovskites. Uh, and the, the first question, how we can fabricate such nanoparticles? Mm, in principle, uh, it, they can be fabricated by laser ablation, by laser printing. Uh, when laser focuses on the perovskite film, and we just create a nanoparticles. Also, by chemical synthesis, uh, by precipitation of uh, solution on, on substrate. Also, some focused iron beam lithography can be applied or laser nanostructuring. Uh, and this everything is applied to can can be applied for various compositions of perovskites. And uh, regarding uh, basic properties of uh, optical properties of perovskite nanoparticles, we should start from uh, very basic things like uh, sketch analysis of scattering properties of uh, perovskites of different compositions from uh, low band gap to wide band gap uh, perovskites and for different shapes for sphere, for cube, or for uh, cylinders. And you see here, this is calculations from me series, scattering efficiencies, uh, and even parcel effect in nanoparticles is calculated. And one can see uh, various resonances, me resonances in these all these shapes. So it means that we can fabricate uh, particles and expect uh, some resonant response from, from uh, these particles. And as I told you already, that in dielectric nanoparticles we can achieve so-called character conditions when we have interference between magnetic dipolar resonance and electrical dipole resonances. Let's assume that we have a cubic particle and we can uh, achieve uh, forward scattering in each particle and then we can create a metasurface based on this um, character, uh, nanoparticles demonstrating character effects. So we considered a uh, standard uh, bromide perovskite with uh, a pronounced exciton also in the visible range. So we performed the calculations, optim optim optimization calculations for metasurface uh, made of these perovskite nanoparticles. And we see that at certain uh, parameters, at height around uh, 160 period, uh, super wavelength period for visible range, now we we achieve some uh, low in uh, some minimum in reflex reflectance. So it means that we can achieve. So here, this is for bullet types particles. So you see, you see here that we can achieve broadband uh, very and very low um, uh, reflectance from these films. So an experimental results are here. So we fabricated arrays of uh, this perovskite bullet like nanoparticles. And uh, you see here that uh, their reflectance from the film is up to 30%. And after nanostructuring, we have just only around 5% of reflection and increase of transmittance through such metasurface. So it means that we suppress backward scattering from each meta atom and achieve anti-reflection uh, from this metasurface. Interestingly, that uh, after processing by focused ion beam, which is like very, uh, very harmful uh, method because for light emitting structures because uh, it generates a lot of defects um, in the remaining material and indeed after just direct cutting we have very low photoluminescence yield but after some post-processing we will recover uh, photoluminescence yield and you see here that the metasurface demonstrates even higher photoluminescence because of uh, resonant behavior because resonant uh, uh, mere resonances around the photoluminescence, so, so due to parcel effect. Uh, also, interestingly, that uh, in mere reason in mere resonant nanoparticle, um, if we consider uh, exciton, uh, what what happens if we couple exciton with mere resonances in nanoparticles? So in this material. We, we 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 have also exciton as i told at room temperature so uh we fabricated nanoparticles in this case by laser ablation and and studied scattering properties from each nanoparticles of uh, spherical like shape 
and we see that at some uh, sizes uh, more than 100 nanometers we have some me like uh, behavior so we have a strong scattering in some some uh, spectral uh, positions so some spectral ranges and uh, we always see some deep some minimum around uh, one wavelength so which is corresponds to a position of exciton uh, of the material of bulk material so and uh, this dip is known uh, is due to for no resonance because between relatively broad mean resonance and narrow excitonic resonance so in this case uh, you see here we just couple these two uh, type of um, modes and uh, such kind of uh, minimum can be observed uh, in the spectral is the spectrum of scattering so and interestingly that uh, this resonance can be tuned uh, in broad range and broad, broad spectral range and for this we we use the so-called uh, anion exchange reaction when we uh, when we can use just thin film or nanoparticles for this purpose of perovskites then put uh, h chlorine acid just a droplet in the petri dish then heat it up and vapors just uh, dope uh, this film or nanoparticles and after some time we we, we have just uh, chlorine perovskite film and just from uh, our ellipsometry data from the films we we see that indeed after just a few minutes we can uh, we can create a chlorine film uh, from bromine so and the same thing can be done for perovskite nanoparticles we also expose bromine perovskite in h chlorine acid and after doping we see that this scattering this extinction spectrum from the array of nanoparticles is just shifted to a blue range due to anion exchange reaction by replacement of uh, bromine with uh, chlorine and you see in the place where we have we should have uh, maximum in absorption we have minimum because of uh, fano fano deep so this is quite important knowledge for people who are doing let's say who can create some uh, who wants to create uh, leds based on some nanoparticles and they should be careful because in extinction standard and spectrophotometer experiments with such substrates they can uh, face this problem that in the place where they where they have should have uh, maximum absorption they have minimum so this is because of scattering scattering coupling of me resonances with excitons this, this is quite useful knowledge and uh, the question is whether this resonance tuning uh, final resonance tuning uh, is reversible and the question is yes so we just if we take uh, bromide perovskite particles expose them make them chlorine and then uh, after this step we if we use exactly the same uh, array, uh, substrate with nanoparticles and expose it again by by each bromide uh, acid so after that we can recover these nanoparticles so and uh, create again the same uh, come back to the same uh, state so and this is uh, true not only for uh, complete uh, bromine you know chlorine but also for some intermediate states so this is quite powerful technique for uh, chemical tuning of uh, nanophotonic designs uh, and just uh, I will touch uh, another approach how we can tune for no resonance in, nano, in perovskite nanoparticles. It can be also done by uh, strong pumping of particles. And we just in this work we just check that particles of different uh, sizes they possess different extinction spectrum. For small particles we don't have for no, we have just uh, maximum and extinction. But where we have domination of uh, scattering we have deep and in uh, time resolved um, photo excitation experiments we see uh, it, for one particle it's like a bleaching effect and in other particles it's like um, uh, uh, degrees of uh, transmittance so this is again due to uh, due to uh, coupling between so specific of coupling of exciton with me resonance so this is very important for optical applications 
And uh, but the most interesting thing, uh, in our opinion, is to use uh, me resonant nanoparticles, perovskite nanoparticles, to create the smallest possible uh, lasers, um, lasers for invisible range. So for this case, we need to have a regular shape of a crystal, so to to have good optical properties and low defect concentration to have a higher uh, quantum yield. So and <clears throat> uh, just uh, you may be very well uh, know that uh, for, for for lasers there are also some kind of um, competition between two approaches: the electric lasers uh, or semiconductor lasers and plasmonic lasers. So these two families um, are, they differ uh, from each other. Um, uh, Due to the, the following uh, parameters, so for dielectric uh, cavities we have uh, relatively low localization of light, but high quality factors for resonances, and vice versa for plasmonics we have, we have very uh, good localization, even sub-wavelength localization, uh, but so the payment, the price for this is uh, just low quality factors and high lo high loss, high uh, losses in the metal because of high uh, higher Im imaging part of uh, refractive index of direct permittivity of metal. So, and uh, compactization of lasers is important to um, to to compactize uh, chips, optical chips, and based on different uh, different uh, technologies, uh, the so-called Moore's law. For photonics, uh, in principle, uh, is developing till now. Uh, but of course, if you plot the same the same curves uh, on the just near on the same plot with electronics, you see the huge difference. Just one order of uh, six orders of magnitude difference between electronics and photonics. So, and uh, the challenge is to at least partially fill this gap. And also to keep and keep the advantages of photonics and optical chips, because uh, photo photons can propagate in free space, uh, and uh, speed of operation of such optical chips is also higher, or far faster as compared with electrons, uh, electronics analog uh, analogs. And yeah, and size and materials is, are two challenges to uh, for for this field. And uh, regarding lasers, nano lasers, micro lasers, um, if we are talking about optical chips, we uh, should uh, focus on on this type of uh, type of elements, which responsible for uh, amplitude control. Let's say for this uh, type of beam steering optical chip, uh, we have uh, so la nano and micro lasers are sh are sh should be used also, or not not only for uh, for sources, but also for modulate uh, for for amplification, for single amplification. So and for perovskite nano lasers, uh, so we uh, we should solve the number a number of challenges. So the first one is size reduction. Then also we should dream about electrically pumped lasers, uh, and also perovskites are very good for cost efficiency because it's very cheap material. And uh, it's quite resource abundant. So, um, as I told, we should use a material with uh, very good uh, cavity with uh, with regular shape and uh, high crystallinity. So, in case of uh, cesium lead bromine perovskite, uh, this is the case of micro nan nanocubes. And here you see a nice uh, electron diffraction picture um, showing that this is a uh, uh, single such type of cubes are single crystal materials, so they are perfect in this in the, regarding the uh, defect properties. And also, we realize that we should grow it not in glass and amorphous glass, but on sapphire to improve their qualities. And the question is, what what are the levels of quality factors can we achieve in nano cavities? Because in microplates or nanowires with micro scale lens of course we, have, we can have high q uh, fabric perot resonances or vgm uh, whispering gallery modes but what about nanoparticles and we performed uh, recently uh, some um, 
some simulation, numerical simulations uh, on the modes, uh, quality factors for, for nanoparticles of perovskites of different shapes. And interestingly, that with for sizes less than one uh, for, for, for one wavelength, uh, in principle, cubic shape uh, give uh, comp comparable or sometimes even better quality factors as compared with sphere uh, spheroids. So it means that we don't need to use uh, sp spheroids with a lot of defects because of obviously this is not with it, it cannot be single crystal spheroids. It's of course polycrystalline with amorphous shell material with a lot of defects, but cuboids are much better. In this regard, and in our in our recent work, <clears throat> we tested various uh, uh, perovskite uh, nanocuboids and observed the threshold like appearance of uh, lasing line. So, and scattering uh, scattering experiments show that the smallest uh, nanocubes uh, supporting lasing, uh, which with size just uh, 310 nanometers, uh, with lasing around 530 nanometers. As you can see here, uh, support me resonances and also me resonances around the emission wavelengths. We also performed all uh, laser characterization for these nanoparticles and observed a dominance of sort order me mode for these nanocubes. And this is um, magnetic octo domination of magnetic octopole for this particle. And also, this is map. Uh, for different nanocuboids in comparison with theory, uh, so we 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 see that uh, laser threshold uh, you can uh, here uh, uh, yes yeah, need, needs to gain around ten uh, thousands in material gain. So uh, and regarding the you know, some old electric lasers, so um, at the moment of publishing of this work, so it was a record small non-plasmonic uh, nanolaser because uh, it um, uh, it works uh, on the short uh, order me mode and is much smaller than the uh, the micro lasers nano lasers uh, working in the visible range at room temperature so this is important to say that this room records among the room temperature single particle nano lasers without plasmonic parts and uh, once we have uh, nano laser and micro lasers made of perovskites, it's tempting to uh, to couple them with some nano wave guides uh, and uh, to, to 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 create a photonic chip. So uh, once we have uh, good lasers for green range, uh, so we have to forget about silicon photonics because silicon has high losses. In the visible range, and we should start to to, uh, to to find so to find the good material for a visible range. So one of the best material for nano wave guiding for creating uh, nano photonic wave guiding uh, systems is of course gallium phosphide, because it has very high refractive index, almost up to four, even higher sometimes. And uh, it's uh, lossless in the most visible of part of visible range and infrared range. So uh, here you see uh, the dispersions, uh, refractive index rail in the imaginary part for gallium phosphide and for perovskites. And you see the emission in the range of uh, lossless range of gallium phosphides. So on gallium phosphide nano wires and nano wave guides can be fabricated by MBA. Uh, technology <clears throat> which we use uh, here in this in Pittsburgh also and uh, the quality of such nanowires are quite good so and uh, they can be used uh, yeah for, for wave guiding and uh, further we just develop a solution so create a solution uh, of this with these nanowires and then just put them into solution of precursors uh, of perovskites and then uh, each nanowire works as a seed for crystallization for uh, micro and nano laser uh, perovskite lasers. And finally, we have a uh, high quality uh, micro laser uh, with integrated inside um, inside nano waveguide uh, with a lens more than 20 microns. And you see here that in regime of photoluminescence, we have very good propagation, almost no losses here, and waveguiding uh, 
on this in this range so even invisible range so almost without losses this is comparison with uh, similar uh, which was published previously um, with the silver plasmonic waveguide but the performance of this of metal nano waveguides is much much worse as compared with um, gallium phosphide so there's no losses for for this material in this range so this is some examples uh, now it's in lasing regime when we pump it strongly by femtosecond laser pulses we see that even uh, if two materials are integrated in each other uh, by but by su such uh, quite uh, root methods of just simple chemicals growth of these two different materials but still we have lasing is good for thresholds and uh, we have a light wave guiding coupling to this wave guide. so here we see we see that we can integrate uh, this wave guide with some other light emitting nanoparticle made of another reddish perovskites and also we can couple it with nano another way in guide so it's here you see uh, the result that uh, by initiating lasing here we can initiate photoluminescence after wave guiding and pump this uh, nanoparticle it's emit red line and then some parts of light decouples uh, in the end of this third facet so this is uh, what we can do with um, nano waveguides and perovskite nano micro lasers so and once uh, one of the advantage of perovskites as i told that they're quite tunable uh, and we can easily tune it uh, by putting the material in uh, acids and papers as I, I just showed it but uh, just to notice that again how it works and the same story uh, is can be a uh, can be used for for this integrated system so we created this micro laser with nanowire and then uh, provide this reaction of real, real, of anion exchange and by uh, applying HO dye acid we just shift photoluminescence to red region and then shift it back so of course there are some defects but still uh, we demonstrate this is possible to tune this integrated a system just uh, on uh, just after fabrication and uh, the, in the last part of my talk i would uh, discuss uh, how we can scale up um, uh, some uh, nano and micro lasers fabrication um, because uh, many standard methods of nanolithography uh, are not suitable for for perovskites because they don't like polar liquids so and so all this message should be applied with care uh, on the other hand lasers or lasers nanostructuring uh, this is quite clean method because uh, photon is just heating by photons no chemistry and also perovskites as i told already this is defect tolerant material so it's quite robust to defects and uh, perovskite has very low thermal conductivity it means that we can apply femtosecond laser pulses just uh, shaped by some face, face plates for instance and uh, in this case we just uh, deposit a perovskite film on glass and apply it uh, donut la like uh, laser pulses and cut some micro discs they can cut um, different uh, designs and each micro disc can support visible in gallery mode and after excitation it's initiate a laser emission and in our work uh, so we just uh, create uh, either silicon uh, say single sorry single uh, micro discs or just a huge array of perovskite micro discs just a billion of um, micro discs here which can create be created just less than uh, half hour or ha half an hour and uh, for it's it's it works uh, so why it's worse for lasing because after pl mapping of such micro disc we see that there are no um, damage and uh, quenching of photoluminescence after laser ablation despite we heat <clears throat> strongly heat this area and and remove the material perovskite um, uh, doesn't lose its uh, light emitting properties mm. and it's it works on, for different for different composition for green perovskite for red perovskite for different 
compositions yeah and <clears throat> by shaping the beam in another way so we can create some stripes uh, of intensity and then remove the material from uh, from the film uh, in the form of uh, and remaining forms are nanowires so by laser ablation we can also <clears throat> create a huge arrays of nanowire lasing, uh, lasers and uh, which are really super plants and again this is due to low thermal conductivity and high robustness of peroxides to uh, overheating so therefore uh, we we can have still have uh, high high quality <coughs> lasers even even with super lens uh, dimensions and in the very end, uh, I will just uh, show some recent results. Uh, so where we can also ablate single crystal uh, perovskites. <clears throat> and here you, you see the direct comparison, for instance, with silicon with much, much higher uh, thermal conductivity. You see almost uh, two and a half uh, <clears throat> orders of magnitude difference. And you see the ablation of perovskites gives very clean and smooth craters. Whereas for silicon, due to uh, overheating of uh, remaining in areas, long um, uh, lifetime of melt, melted area, we see some damaged and ugly, ugly uh, craters. Uh, but and, and this allows us to create some micro lens print, uh, provide some micro lens printing, some with high quality uh, by shaping of the beam. And also we studied the properties of this exicon micro lens uh, and we see that very, very good quality of focusing for, for such micro lens of exicons. And also uh, such micro plates uh, nanostruction by laser can be, is possible uh, not only in single step uh, direct cutting by laser like stripe like focus uh, but also um, by applying two-stage laser ablation, when we just rotate the stripe after first uh, processing, we just rotate the stripe, and uh, uh, in this case, light focuses additionally in each uh, in each uh, this grid uh, of this grating, and we see uh, additional localization uh, just uh, beneath um, uh, this uh, each stripe. And we can create nano holes, uh, nano holes for and, and create uh, create something like uh, with two wave lens structures, which can work actually as a meta surfaces uh, after just proper uh, adjusting of geometrical properties. So and to sum up, uh, so with halide perovskites, we can um, observe mu resonance in this uh, particle. So which we observed in, in, uh, very recently. And then uh, these uh, particles with mu resonances demonstrate Fano resonances, uh, which can be tuned chemically or by a strong laser excitation. Uh, also very interestingly that uh, high quality perovskite nanocubes can support lasing at room temperature in visible range with record small volumes. And uh, high robustness of perovskites to defects and wet chemistry, chemistry approaches can um, result in integration, simple integration of uh, some perovskite with non perovskite semiconductors to uh, create some integrated um, uh, photonics uh, elements. Uh, and also, laser ablation is a powerful technique to create uh, perovskite nano micro lasers with high speed and high quality of different uh, may and it's quite universal method can uh, fabricate micro lasers from different compositions so i would like to thank all collaborations uh quite old ones and new one as a vulcan and uh, yeah and thank you for your kind attention Well, thank you very much, Sergey, uh, for your very nice uh, talk today. Um, I think we should also share uh, with the audience that um, we won a mega grant in Russia with ITMO. And um, I should also let uh, all the audience hear uh, that along with other colleagues, uh, Sergey uh, will be visiting uh, Bikant UNAM in the coming uh, years. So. 
uh, and he'll be soon here, I think in two weeks time. Uh, so with that, uh, maybe uh, let me check if we have any question uh, from the audience. Uh, please feel free to raise your hand uh, or to jump in. Ibrahim, uh, there you go. Please. Uh, thank you, Sergeant, for a nice talk. Uh, I have a, a, a simple uh, question regarding the coherence of the uh, lasers you are getting from your halide perovskite. Any value for the coherence time from the literature or you guys already deal with? With the coherence time of the of your laser emission. You mean uh, temporal coherence? Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, we did measure it. Uh, we we also we only notice uh, uh, like uh, in appearance of interference. Uh, like Using my microscope for me too. Sorry? Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, regarding uh, the temporal coherence, we didn't measure it, uh, but with just uh, one of the confirmation that we have coherent emission, it's like a fringe interference regions from, from the, uh, the threshold-like appearance of these regions um, about the threshold of uh, lasing. I see. Thank you. All right, thank you. I, I see uh, Michael has his virtual hand raised. Um, Michael, please go ahead. Uh, yes, I, I have actually a, a question about the same uh, slide, I think. Uh, my question is that uh, you have a nanowire and which is connected to a larger, uh, let's say a large chunk of material. How, how about uh, the, the interface and the density of states? Uh, how? What is the yield that you have in your nanowire of your, um, let's say, the light, laser light? Is that of any, um, I, I, I come from an, a more electronic background, so, so maybe I'm completely wrong, but isn't, isn't it very hard to extract large amounts of, of light uh, by a thin wire, let's say? Uh, yeah, thanks for this important question. So actually, for, to check how uh, light is uh, coupled from, can be coupled from or extracted from this micro laser to nanowire, we just performed the numerical simulations. Uh, here, some part of it, uh, but here we just put uh, like a, one dipole, dipolar emit, emitter from the perovskite part and we analyzed how it uh, coupled uh, with nanowire, with gallium phosphide nanowire, when this dipole uh, is placed on different positions regarding this, uh, uh, relatively to this nanowire. So from our estimation, the coupling is around uh, just a few percents. So actually, because of uh, high contrast, refractive index is different for for, for this material, so we have um, we have some reflection, and some only some parts of light just uh, comes inside uh, this nanovirus and can propagate then uh, in this wave, wave, waveguide. Thanks. Very cool work. Great. Um, any other question or comments um, from the audience? All right, if not, uh, maybe I have one question, uh, Sergei. You showed us self-resonant uh, nanolasers using perovskite based on me resonances. I think the smallest size uh, was around 300, 310 nanometers maybe. Mm -hmm. I guess sitting on a substrate, right? So if you would use that, um, for example, suspended somehow, or mm -hmm. really low the electric substrate, uh, this in principle should go to even smaller size. Do you have a sense how small it could be possible to go? Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, so uh, I think, yeah, we can go even to quadruple resonance. I think it's, uh, as you can see here from our calculation, um, next minimum is around here. So it's here, but for uh, this threshold, it's like quite high. 
due to high refractive index of substrates if we just uh, make it less so in this case we can expect uh, next uh, minimum is around uh, 250 uh, 250 yeah I, I, plus minus of course because everything is shifted a little bit but yeah it's it's here it should be yeah i guess having uh, these um uh, cubic uh, nanostructures sitting on a very thin film uh, maybe almost suspended uh, type mm -hmm. of architecture could could give really good results in my opinion mm -hmm. great yeah exactly okay this brings us um to the end uh, please join me to thank uh, professor makarov once again and uh, please give your uh, virtual uh, applause um, all right thank you very much uh, and have a great weekend ahead thank you yeah thanks uh, to everyone for listening for your questions so see you next week <laughs> all right see you soon thank you bye bye yeah, bye